to my channel where we're about that breaking cycles life wow guys today is a long chapter genesis 24 and it's a bride for isaac um i think if you've read your bible before you understand or you know the story but let me just read it quickly as quickly as possible so it doesn't take up too much of the time let's get right into it and then we can speak about it um after now it says now Abraham was old, when well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who moved over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. And the servant said to him, Perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? But Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your descendants I give this land, he will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will not. Then you will be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed for all his master's good goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel, kneel down outside the city by a well of water at evening time the time when women go out to draw water. Then he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac, and by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened, before he had finished speaking, that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now the woman, now the young woman was very beautiful to be a virgin. No man had known her, and she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came out. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the throw, ran back to the well to draw water and drew all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was when the camels had finished drinking that the man took a golden nose ring, weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrist, weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, my Milka's son, whom she bore to Nahor. Moreover, she said to him, We have both straw and feed enough and room to lodge. Then the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth towards my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So the young woman ran and told her mother's household these things. Now Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran out to the man by the well. So it came to pass when he saw the nose ring, and the bracelet on his sister's wrist. And when he heard the words of his sister Rebecca say, thus the, thus the man spoke to me, that he went to the man. And there, and there he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and the place for the camels. Then the man came to the house, and he unloaded the camels, and provided straw and feed for the camels, and water to wash his feet. 
and the feet of the men who were with him. Food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told about my errand. And he said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord had blessed my master greatly, and he had become great. And he was given me, and he has given me flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female, servants and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when he was old, and to him he was given all that he has. He has given all that he has. Now my master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell, for you shall go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, Perhaps the woman will not follow me. But he said to me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way, and you shall take a wife for my son from my family and from my father's house. You will be clear from this oath when you arrive among my family, for if they will not give her to you, then you will be released from my oath. And this day I came to the well and said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you will, if you will now prosper the way in which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes out to draw water, and I say to her, Please give me a little water from your picture to drink and she says to me drink and i will drop for your camels also let her be the woman whom the lord has appointed for my master's son but before i had finished speaking in my heart there was rebecca coming out with her picture on her shoulder and she went down to the well and drew water and i said to her please let me drink and she made haste and let her picture down from her shoulder and said drink and i will give your camels a drink also so i drank and she gave the camels a drink then i asked her and said whose daughter are you and she said the daughter of bethuel nahor's son from milka who whom milka bore to him so i put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist and i bowed my head and worshiped the lord and blessed the lord god of my master abraham who had led me in the way of truth to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master tell me and if not tell me that i may turn to the right hand or to the left then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you, either bad or good. Here is Rebekah before you. Take her and go, and let her be your master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. And it came to pass, when Abraham's servants heard with their words that he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Then the servants brought out jewelry of silver, jewelry of gold, and clothing, and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. And he and the men who were with him ate and drank and stayed all night. Then they arose in the morning, and he said, Send me away to my master. But her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least ten, after that she may go. And he said to them, Do not hinder me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away so that I may go to my master. Then they said, We will call the young woman and ask her personally. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abram's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Then Rebekah and her maids arose, and they rode on the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Now Isaac came from the way of Beer Lahai Roy, for he dwelt in the south. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening, and he lifted his eyes and looked, and there the camels were coming. Then Rebekah lifted her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from her camel. For she had said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's things. Oh, literally 10 minutes of reading.
um this is just a basic description of the initial um the initial um or the original way of getting to marry someone right and it's basically how god um, deals with us he goes he comes to us or he yeah he comes to us right but in those days it was the father to another father right so you can say god goes to jesus right and jesus presents us as his children which is actually biblical because that is exactly what he does he stands as a mediator between us and god so yes um as we can see from the story here um it was isaac that went out and or abraham that went out in search for a wife for his um for his for his son isaac and this is just typical in how god reaches out for us he goes after us and then his servant was sent and god was with the servant and this is why honestly when you're going into marriage or you're going into spousal relationships we ought to be very prayerful just like this servant he needed to make sure that this was god's doing right so we need to be in constant prayer we need to be constantly communicating communicating with God to know what he wants for our lives right and he did that and he said Lord if this happens then I know she is the chosen one right so he saw Rebecca the servant saw Rebecca and God just orchestrated it in such a way that she literally answered the very prayer that that the servant prayed to God and that is how he knew that this was the one and even in knowing that she was the one he still had to go speak to her father and then and you see it's through the testimony that God it's through the testimony and the experience that he had with God in the prayer being answered and in speaking it it's through that that the father was saying how can we speak against what god is doing right if god is doing something how can we as a human try to fight against what god is doing right and even so even so it was still rebecca's choice to follow or not because the father said okay how can we fight god but then he turned to his daughter, Rebecca, and said, Are you willing to follow this man? Given all that you have heard, given everything that um, he has said in regards to his testimony and how his, his, sir, his master sent him and God answered in the prayer, are you still willing to follow this man? And that is the basis of what our society now has a serious problem with is submission it's not that the woman will just submit to you because you're a man right it's a matter of is she willing to follow or submit to you with all that you have done for her and that is the principle of the gospel Jesus knocks at our door he comes after us he chases after us and never 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 you see God force force his children to worship him he never forces his children to submit to him he never 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 forces anyone to choose him right what he does is show himself to his people he knocks he keeps knocking and he shows himself worthy of being accepted and if they choose yes that is beneficial to them because he knows what he has to offer which is he is god of the earth he is sovereign and he knows what the future holds for his people 
and he knows that if you don't choose to follow me there is also a consequence and people would say it's still control but to be honest if in your heart you know you really don't want to follow god he has allowed you control is saying you have to do it he did not say you have to do it you do not have to follow him he's asking you to follow him because he sees what's ahead and he wants you to escape it he has already done all he can to, uh, to show you or to give you that way of escape and if you don't want to accept it it is also there is so much that a person can do if we're abusing practical terms there's so much a friend or a person can do but if you don't want it for yourself how then can you then say that the person has been unfair to you honestly and that is our relationship with god so until we get to that point where we realize that it's our choice and we can love and choose God because he allows us to reject him then and only then we will understand um, that that point of the gospel which is actually the main point right I just love this story of Rebecca and Isaac to show that really how Jesus is to us and I'm glad Rebecca chose to follow him. Honestly, I'm glad Rebecca chose to follow him and to go back because this is the lineage of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But even so, if she didn't follow him, best believe God would have found someone else to fulfill the promise. That is just who God is. If you don't want to cooperate with the plan or the will of God, he will definitely find someone else. Who will fulfill the task that is God you cannot stop his task from being fulfilled it just cannot happen so that is really our lesson from this story when you are seeking a spouse or I would just put it general honestly anything in life that you're seeking pray just as all the servant was praying hard pray and believe in the prayer and believe in the condition that you prayed for. Pray in your heart, because the devil will trample. I swear he will trample with your prayers, with your praying out loud or anything. Right? Pray in your heart. You know, you can God hears our prayers. Pray in your heart and ask God. I've done this many times. Ask God, if this is your will, please show me a sign. Don't be don't overdo it though, you know. But be sincere with it. If this is your will, show me a sign. And then go on to say that. And after he has done that, have faith in the fact that he answered the prayer and that he will fulfill it further. Okay? So that is our Bible study for this week. It's actually Tuesday. <laughs> but I have things to do so I will be able to do it on Thursday, on Thursday but you'll see it on Thursday so have a good day I'll see you on Sunday for Sunday Song Spotlight bye bye have a great day hey guys I hope you guys enjoyed today's encouragement and I hope you guys are ready for the day ahead now do me a favor and press that like button and subscribe button if you are new so that we can get more of this positive Christian content out into the world okay and I'll link my daily devotional playlist right here and my Let's Talk playlist if you want to tackle some social issues, okay? So have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.